Hello everybody, I want to start with a special series, a very very important series about asymmetrical forms, asymmetrical geometrical forms in use for power system. I want to explain into in going to detail what that means. What is asymmetry? Well, as an name, as a name um, uh, implies, it is something which is not symmetrical. So, we, I refer here to nature. So, nature is our guide in any in everything actually. So, and I want to start with the asymmetrical beautiful form which is defined by uh, the so-called golden ratio or the golden mean. I'm not displaying here a rectangle with the sides A and B. The value or the dimension of A and B represents the ratio within the rectangle. A is approximately two times bigger than B or a third and there's a specific cal calculation mathematic calculation existing which I will show in the next slide but what this little <coughs> definition here or this little ratio will show is that it has a much greater meaning in an overall construction or an overall description about how nature is built and what impacts it's going to have for our energy systems. Here you can see the mathematical expression of the golden ratio also um, called the golden number and the Greek symbol is phi um, a plus b divided by a or a divided by b that's the ratio and in the upcoming slide I will see you how that is integrated in other natural occurrences. Here you can see a drawing it is a continuation of the golden ratio over time in space. Um, so that is called the Fibonacci sequence, Leonardo Fibonacci in the 17th century Italian mathematician calculated this one and the Fibonacci sequence occurs literally in nature everywhere. It's it's kind of a building block for the universe, for nature. And believe it or not, even if you've not heard of it, there is uh, a sequence in the financial market existing which calculates trend lines and an uh, analyzes performance of share price over time and forecast or predicts the performance of share price in the future and that's based on the same value the Fibonacci sequence. So here's you see here a numerical expression of the Fibonacci sequence starting with 1, 2, 3, 5, 8 and there's one aspect you should be aware the Schumann frequency of planet Earth which was around Tesla's time 7-8 hertz has increased based on the uh, universal constellation we are going in a new area of time which has a large um, um, cycle of 30-36 thousand years and we have an increase of frequency or ringing on this planet which is up the next number in the Fibonacci sequence which is 13 you can google it on, uh, on the internet, you will find out that that's the truth. The official station actually calculating this frequency on a planetary level. They should be proving that the Fibonacci sequence has an impact on us and on the universe. Coming back to my experimental, uh, experimental setup and what the reason is why I show you all this kind of some would call it secret uh, geometry which I would say it's not secret at all it's all around us we are part of it so we shouldn't deny it we should live with it and we should apply it so what does it mean that means we have electrical components so components can be um, everything 
from a coil to a capacitor to a resistor and so there's one um, so there's one component which I'm focusing here um, on the subject which is a capacitor so normal capacitors have uh, equal surface so that means that um, if it's a if electrolytic capacitor you have equal sides for um, cathode and anode and what I imply here and what I want to show here is that you apply um, the golden ratio so that means the proportion between anode and cathode in a, in, in a different fashion so that has a huge impact on energy transfer and huge impact and in in terms of energy delivery and I'm quite and um, and I will show you later on how that is possible and how that is working here in my example you see here that in the 20s they did also produce tubes so that was a time when when tubes were very fashionable and the way they did build tubes here is here that's the sparking tube so 1B22 um, as they used of course they have two electrodes so they could use literally the electrodes in parallel to each other but they haven't done that they used an outer electrode which is larger and a smaller electrode which is inside doped it in, in radium and on top they used hydrogen which has the highest breakdown voltage the two things so the radium one to uh, the radium um, isotope is actually helping here um, to propagate sparking but the hydrogen is actually stopping it and also protecting um, the electrodes from corroding if you want but the interesting bit is that the constellation of these two electrodes are asymmetric that means that one the cathode or the anode part is larger than the opposite quite obviously and you don't see that anywhere else so there must be a reason why and when you look up um, Eric Dollar's video for his wireless setup he was mentioning this two 1B22 um, spark um, tubes actually as inhibiting negative resistance that's something I would like to focus on on my next um, um, slides. The so called vortex inside will drive the energy from the ambient um, system into here and will have um, a large impact. So they use this kind of systems before. I will replicate this one in a later stage in video with, with self-made capacitors. So here you see uh, um, in this component definition, this, uh, com um, um, in this construction you see an asymmetric um, component where the electrodes are asymmetric in dimensions. So if I go back to my little examples here, you remember my little Funtron tube you have seen my latest video where I struggled to get some more energy in it. The problem is both electrodes here on both sides are identic in, uh, identical in form. So that they are symmetrical. So energy, they are literally, um, when they hit each other on both sides via the waves, is kind of neutralized. So I will apply something else here. So coming back to the question, how can you say it says there's negative resistance? Well, Here you can see a waveform or three different waveforms of various definitions. So one waveform is supposed positive resistance on the left hand side. Literally everybody has seen that on the scope. It's a ring down. So when you when you hit your bell with a hammer, so you have the highest noise, highest amplitude in the beginning, and then it goes down to the lowest level until it stops. That's called ring down. The second ring, second picture in the middle, is a superconductor. That means once you ring it, it never stops to ring. It stays always on the same value until you apply a load 
and cell you diminish um, the energy in the, in the system but the superconductor is keeping the energy on the same level and on the right hand side we have something you might have not heard of it but negative resistance and there are actually a lot of applications in the market today who is using negative resistance and a Tesla coil has a ring up functionality as well as part of the primary sec secondary ringing where the ring up is obvious so that is actually a gain of energy you're starting with a, with a low hit with a hammer and the noise getting louder and louder and louder let's move on to the next slide a little example how um, you can apply negative resistance there's more than one option available but that is gives you a clear picture you see on the left hand side a standard resonance circuit an LCR or RCL circuit yeah, it components an inductor and uh, con um, a coil it can contain the resistor and the capacitor in this circuit you would have a so-called ring down now look at the right hand side does it look familiar? I think it does. So this circuit does inhibit negative resistance. You will experience a ring up. So that means it's an energy gaining system. And that's what we're after. We want to apply this kind of functionality in our system to increase the energy um, from ring to ring, if you want. So that's how it looks like when it uses only a third of the power of the system. So the small electrode is here. The large electrode is the sphere. And as you can see here, it's quite a strong impact here as well. And I can feel that. So if we go over now to the oscilloscope, I have something interesting to show you. That is a wave I get from that. This is a triangle wave. It is not a sine wave. It's a triangle wave I'm picking up here. And that is very, very interesting. It contains only odd harmonics, as you know, as the square wave. So in a resonance system, you would not expect a triangle wave but that's what I measure here from the tube another way to implement that, let me get, go a little bit more down with the power would, to ch would be to change the position of the coil I mean the coil is in a moment 50-50 but I can move it over here let's say I move it to that side so that actually that's the third now I moved it to a third over to the side in a coil arrangement so let's see how that looks like I need to tune that again That is 5 volt at a moment, but already 250 milliamp. So you can see now that the propagation from the right hand side is very strong. Let me get that up. Oh, I'm already at 30 volt at 1 amp. Yeah, let's see how that looks like. It's quite strong. Let's see here on the oscilloscope. Tuning. So the excitation is now extremely strong. 1.2 amp 
1.3 amp at 50 volt. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, I can feel that, that field. Very, very strong. So negative resistance implies that, that the so-called reactance of the system is overcome like a parallel resistor if you want which allows you to draw more current or to produce with less energy in a system more output if you want so that's only the beginning to show you a couple of interesting things that is quite impressive